Hey, good evening, guys. It's Tuesday. And, of course, as everybody knows, as I said two weeks ago, we're approaching another fight in the United States Congress again. And it's for the debt ceiling this time. Our creditworthiness is already being on, uh, being questioned before this default. It's already being uh, looked at negatively so that they can downgrade the credit rating of the Treasury after we may or may not hit the debt limit. And a friend of mine brought something up, and I think the president's attorneys also looked at this. Somebody wondered if it would be possible for the president to use the 14th Amendment of the Constitution against Congress in order to raise the debt ceiling. And actually, on the text of the 14th Amendment, if you look at the right section, that might be plausible just by reading that specific section of the 14th Amendment. And section 4 of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution reads that the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. And certainly, if you left the analysis there, or at least the, the text that you're analyzing, if that's all you took, then yeah, that would make sense. But... No, because if you scroll down to the last section, section 5, right after it, the Congress shall have power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. So the president can't use a 14th Amendment argument to say, it's your duty to do that. I'm making you do this. Because the president can't compel Congress to do anything. But the other question to ask is, Okay, it's not in the 14th Amendment. Gotcha. That's, that's not going to work. Is it in the inherent powers of the executive? And I think the answer is, if you read Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution, which grants the powers of the executive, you would find there's not a whole lot there to support that claim either. So President Obama is pretty well handcuffed. Why? The executive actually has very, very limited power in the U.S. governmental system, in the federal system. All he really does is oversee the executive department. He can make appointments to the Supreme Court. He can appoint junior officers in the executive branch. He can appoint cabinet members with the advice and consent of the Senate. He can make treaties and negotiate treaties all he wants. Uh, the treaties have to be ratified by the Senate. He can make executive agreements. That's actually an implied power uh, with foreign nations. And that's about it. The rest of the article uh, it conforms with how electors are chosen. So President Obama's not exactly well equipped to deal with this crisis either. The Constitution was written because it needed government to work together, all three branches. That's why the term compromise comes up so much in constitutional history, right? You had the Great Compromise on how the legislature was supposed to work. Instead of the unicameral legislature um, or the bicameral legislature based upon, I think both were based upon population or both had equal representation. I can't remember exactly. This is where I got to watch Crash Course a little more often. But we compromise on the system that we have now. So, you know, it's really hard to say that one branch can unilaterally act. It is. It's very hard to say. I mean, the president is also the commander-in-chief of the Army and Navy, but this is clearly not a, a military situation that we can use military power to overcome. Trust me, presidents have tried to do that in times of national emergency to, I think President Truman commandeered steel mills in Ohio, and that was actually upheld as an unconstitutional use of federal power uh, by the executive. It was abuse of power. So military not on the table. The executive has no unilateral authority. We know Congress has the inherent authority under the 14th Amendment to deal with the public debt of the U.S. Can the courts interfere? No. No, the courts can't interfere for several reasons. A, they're not answering a question of law. So it becomes a political question, and the, court, the Supreme Court has already stated they will not answer any political questions especially since there's no law in the books, this would technically be an advisory opinion as well, and the Supreme Court has already said they won't do that either. So let's see. Political question, out. No advisory opinion. 
so they won't answer that way. Can concerned citizens bring some sort of action to the court asking Congress to raise the debt ceiling? No. No. I has a sad, but no. That's called a generalized grievance. We as citizens are upset that the Congress is not performing their duties. Ain't good enough. So sorry to say legally we're kind of hosed here in the U.S. until Congress sorts itself out which is really a sad position to be in. But legally, it's all we've got. Congress has the sole power to handle that. They're the only ones that control the purse strings. Sorry I don't have more for you this week, guys. I'll see you on Tuesday.